everyone, in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start going over some proofs with disjunctions, namely number three out of the textbook A, B, C, and D. Let's get into it. This is 3A. We've got squiggle A wedge B. That would be like saying neither A nor B. And we're trying to get, you can't have both A and B. So these are the rules that we've got in play at this point. And again, can I do arrow out? Can I do modus tollens? Can I do double arrow out? Can I do double arrow in? Can I do and out? Should I do and in? Should I do double negation? Should I do wedge in? can I do wedge out and then these three are all can and shoulds and then these are in emergency scenarios like I can I've only got an I can't do any of the above I can go for an arrow I can't do any of the above efficaciously go ahead and provisionally assume the opposite of your goal so there are some things that we can do here with line one like if I'm going down the list uh, we could do double negation that doesn't look like it's gonna be helpful I could wedge something random in I could say all of this or C that's not going to be helpful. I could do these three, like De Morgan's Law. Like it might seem like, oh, I should do De Morgan's Law here. Like let me take A, B, turn it into an and, and then flip all the slots. I get squiggle A, dot squiggle B. That would be De Morgan's Law on line one. That's not that. Those are not the same thing. So that's not really helpful there. Looks like it would be. That would be something definitely to consider. So if I go down this list, the first thing we can do is actually indirect proof. So let's provisionally assume the contrary of our goal. We're trying to get squiggle A and B. What are we going to do? We're going to take A and B as a provisional assumption for an indirect proof. So we're trying to get any contradiction, any two contraries, and stick them together. So if we go down the list now, what can we do? I can't do stuff with arrows. Can't do stuff with double arrows. There is a dot, though. Let's go ahead and break that down. Really, we only need one of them to do stuff with. That's and out on line two for both. And then we can actually use either one of these to accomplish what we need to do. So when you're trying to build a contradiction, see, like, are there squiggles that you already have? Yeah, I got squiggle A, which B. I'll look and see, could I build the opposite or the contrary of that? So if I've got squiggle A, wedge B, could I build A, wedge B? Yeah, and I have two ways to do it. So in line five here, I can get A, wedge B, and I can do it two ways, and I don't care which one you do here. We could add a B onto A, in which case that would be a wedge in line three, or we could add an A onto B, and that would be wedge in line four. I could just put a four here instead. So either way, you're good. The way wedge in works is you say, what did you add it on to? So you have a choice here. You can say you added the B onto A, or you added the A onto B. I don't care which. I'm. What this says is this says I added the B onto A. I added it onto line three. Great. Now look at line five. It is the contrary of line one, which means we got our contraries. We just need to make a contradiction. So we say A wedge B and squiggle A wedge B. And that's and in line five and line one. And contradiction is complete, which means we can zoom out and say, yeah, squiggle A dot B is true because if the opposite were, it would lead to contradictions. And thus 3A is done. 3B, we've got C arrow D dot E arrow D, our one and only assumption. We're trying to get C wedge E arrow D. Okay, so let's go down the list. Arrow outs that we can do. No arrows, not in parentheses. Arrow outs, motor stones, not a thing. No double arrows involved. Dots, not in parentheses. Yep. So let's break that down. That gets us two things. Get C arrow D and E arrow D. Let's end out on line one for both. Okay, now do we have arrows, not in parentheses? We should do. Left side matches. Nope. Right side contraries. Nope. So what do we do? If we go down the list, we can always do double negation. We can always do wedge in. We can always do these three. We've got the stuff to warrant it. So all five of those things we could do. Six if we include and in. We can put them back together again or and in other things. None of those are viable options right now in the sense of them being efficacious. They don't lead anywhere. So what should we do? Is our goal narrow? Yep. So we provisionally assume this. And the goal is we want to get D. So now let's go down the list. Arrow out. But uh, still, we don't have them by themselves. Uh, there, the letters are there, but we don't have these by themselves. Motor stones, no. Double arrows, no. No dots to take apart. We already did that. We could, again, we could do this one. It doesn't go anywhere. We could do this one. It doesn't go anywhere. We could do this one. It doesn't go anywhere. Can we do this one? Uh, now, this is a newer move, so I want to remind you of the way it works. What you want to look for when you see this are three things for wedge out. First of all, do I have an or of either kind. Do I have an inclusive or exclusive? Either one. And then I want to look for two more things. Do I have one of the or parts on the left side of the arrow? And do I have one of the other or parts also on the left side of the arrow? So that's what we're looking for when we're looking for wedge out. And since this is new, that's why I'm kind of zooming in on this one. But look, do I have an or? Yes. Is one of its or parts also on the left side of the arrow? 
Yes. Is its other or part also on the left side of an arrow? Yes. So what does that mean? Well, two possibilities. If the results are dissimilar, that means I can put them together as a wedge. Okay, if they're dissimilar, that is, if I had two different things, I could put them together as a wedge. Are these two different results here? They are not. So the way it works in that situation, the things on the right sides are the same. I can just say that thing. Now, there's a certain sense in which it's this or this. But if I say like something like, you know, today's Wednesday or today's Wednesday, guess what? Today's Wednesday. That's what it means. If you've got an or statement and you got one of the or parts, that's technically that's a disjunct. In this case, the sinistral disjunct is also an antecedent. That means the left or part is also on the left side of the arrow. The dextral disjunct, the right part of the or, is itself also an antecedent on another conditional statement. That is, it's also on the left side of another arrow. If the results are the same, you can just say the results. You can say, yeah, wedge out. And then what I do there is I cite, where was the wedge? Where was the left or part on the left side of an arrow? And where was the right or part on the left side of the arrow? And bam, there you go. So what we're gonna do is just do that here. Look, so what we can get is we just plug the rule into this. And so here, what corresponds to A wedge B? Well, our or is C wedge E. What corresponds to this? C arrow D. What corresponds to this? E arrow D. So what's the right side of the arrow for both? D, which is what I get, D. How'd I get it? Wedge out, and now I just fill in the parts as they fit. Now you can put the numbers in whatever order that you want, but I like to do it in this order. Where was the or that I used? Where was the disjunction? Line four, okay? Where was the left or part also on the left side of the arrow? Line two. Where was the right or part also on the left side of the arrow? Line three. Uh, and bam, so for a wedge out, you always need three things. Bam, bam, bam. By the way, we were trying to get D, remember? We got it instantly. Bam. So what we can do is we can zoom out immediately and say, yeah, if you got C wedge E, you can get D. Arrow in. Four through five. It's still four through five. I know it looks like it should be four comma five. It's still four through five because that's the way arrow ends work. But this problem is done. Three B is good. Three C is basically three B in reverse. We got C wedge E, arrow D. And we're trying to get C arrow D dot E arrow D. Now notice... What we're trying to solve for is a dot, which I've told you before, and this is still holds, 99% likelihood last move is going to be an and in. It will be an and in. So knowing that, let's go through the motions. Arrow here, left side match, nope. Right side contrary, no double arrows. And out, and in, nope. Double negation, can, but let's not. Wedge in, can, but let's not. This is not an option. Some of these are options, we could do a material implication, we could do conjunctive conditionality. There's no reason to do that. If it, if it adds a bunch more squiggles and it looks messy, it's not worth doing. Here's what I mean by that. Like conjunctive conditionality, how do you change, you could change this arrow into a dot. And so we could say outside, C wedge E dot squiggle D. There you go. Conjunctive conditionality on line one. I don't see this leading anywhere helpful. So that's why I don't want to do it. It's something that we could do, it's not wrong, but uh, you saw that just added a bunch of squiggles that I don't want to deal with. Is our goal an arrow? No, not exactly. Our goal is a dot. And I told you our last move was going to be an and in. So what would it be an and in of? This and this. And so we've done ones like these before. So what I need, 50% of what I need is C arrow D. And also 50% of what I need would be E arrow D. Now I don't have either one of these, but they're both arrows. So I think you know how we're going to proceed. Let's... PA this and get this as its own side quest. And then let's PA this and get this as its own side quest. And then we'll just pump those results in together and we'll be good to go. So let's start with this one. We're gonna go after C arrow D. So what are we gonna go for? Well, we're gonna provisionally assume the right C as a provisional assumption. And we're gonna go after D. Now here with the wedges, this is new, but it's all right. Oh, C, what can I do? Arrow out, motor stones? No, no, double arrows, no, and outs, no. And ins, yeah, but no. Double negation, no. Can I wedge anything in? Well, take a look at the left side of the arrow. The left side of the arrow is C wedge E. Now, the way disjunctions work is if you want to match them, as long as you got one of them, you can just add the other thing on instantaneously. So look, we have C, so we can instantly go C wedge E. Where'd the E come from? Narnia, for all I care. Well, what do we add it on to? So the, the point is when we're doing a wedge in, what did you add it on to? something that was already established. We added it onto C. So I'm gonna say here, this E, we added it onto line two. It doesn't matter where it came from. Now you can't just take 
two nothings and decide to wedge them in together. You can wedge something that came from nowhere onto something that's already established. Okay, that's why I, I, I talk about addition as like stapling it on. It's almost like we stapled this E onto C. Now, can I do an arrow out? Yeah, D, arrow out one and three. Check it out, we were trying to go for D, we got it. Can zoom out and say in line five. Yep, C arrow D works, arrow in, two through four. What's the other thing we need? We need E arrow D. Let's provisionally assume it, get the right side. And this is its own separate side quest. So we're gonna take E here and provisionally assume that. And the goal here is now also D. Now you might be thinking again, oh, well, but I already got D in line four. This is its own separate side quest. All we're dealing with here is we're dealing with six and the stuff on the, the outside of the side quest. So one and five you can deal with. So E, what can I do? Well, five's not gonna be helpful. One, look, look what am I trying to build? Again, when, I'm, when you're trying to build the left side of the arrow and it deals with a wedge, if you've got half of it, you can wedge in on either side. So that means in line seven here, we get C wedge E, and this time we're adding the C onto E, because you can add on to either side. So we're adding this C onto line six. Now with this, can we do an arrow out? Yeah, and we get D. And again, you might be thinking, but, but we already did that. Now in this side quest we did, this is a separate mission. We're using some of the same items in play but this is a separate mission. So this is a separate mission from this. That's why I like to indent these. It makes it a lot more obvious. How do we get that? This one is arrow out one, which is in play because it's outside of this side quest, one and seven. This side quest is now complete. We went from E to D. So what can we do? We can zoom out and say line nine. Yeah, E arrow D is also a thing. Arrow in, in this case, six through eight. And now look, 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 we have this side quest and this side quest, but look at the actual proof. Look at one, five, and nine. The conclusion is line five and line nine. So what we do is just add those in. Look, C arrow D and E arrow D and in, uh, which I said that's going to be the last move because we got this other thing too, and in five and nine. Problem's done. 3D is painful because it does something that is rough to figure out. We've got F wedge G dot H and we want to get F wedge G. It seems straightforward enough. It looks like we're just taking the and H out in a certain manner of speaking. Yeah, that's kind of true. We're just kind of taking the H off. But the process to do that is surprisingly troublesome. So just like in the last problem, where we had to do stuff, we kind of had to figure things out backwards. This one also involves reverse engineering. And it involves reverse engineering with ORs. So when you're going through like arrow out, modus tollens, double arrow out, double arrow in, no. And out, no, that thing's in parentheses. And in, no. Double negation, again, you can. Wedge in, that's not going to lead you anywhere. Wedge out, or we got a wedge. We don't have this on the left side of the arrow. We don't have this on the left side of the arrow. De Morgan's Law, again, we could. That's going to lead to a lot of squiggles. Material implication, yeah, you could do that. You could turn this into squiggle F, arrow, G dot H. Yeah, material implication, you're good to go. You can do it. It's not helpful. Is our goal an arrow? No. Can we do an indirect proof? So can we provisionally assume the opposite of our goal? So squiggle F wedge G. Provisional assumption for an indirect proof. Can we do that? Yeah. Uh, that's not going to be helpful. So it seems like we're kind of stuck. Now this problem is solvable, but you have to think about it in a way that you perhaps haven't thought about before. The thing I want to focus in on is when it seems like nothing is viable, like it doesn't seem like anything's going to go anywhere, look and see are one of the pieces that I have to start with is it an or? Yes. So this is this is kind of a new thing to think about. Do I have an or? I do. Now, if you've got an or and you can prove that you can construct a wedge out from it, you're good. Now you might be thinking, well, I don't have this on the left side of the arrow. I don't have this on the left side of the arrow. Well, that's okay because think about this pattern. So one of the redundant wedge out pattern is this. If you got this, either kind of or and you got one of the or parts on the left side of the arrow and you got one of the other or parts on the left side of the arrow you can get it so if they're the same thing you can just say that and that's actually what we're going to do here so take a look at what we've got here and we're going to fill it in with this like so we're going to go after f wedge g with this so here's what we're going to do if this model is the case we're going to play around like this is a this is b and this is C in the model. So we're gonna do exactly that. So what do I mean by that? We're gonna take this and we're gonna plug the values in what we would need to get. Do we have an or? Yes, we do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mirror what this would look like in this problem. We have an or, we have F wedge G dot H. Following this pattern, if this corresponds to this, 
what would A arrow C correspond to? It, well, it would be the left side of the OR arrow, the thing you're trying to solve for. So what would that be? F arrow F wedge G. Now again, this is the mirror of this. It's the left side of your OR arrow, the thing that you want to get. Now what I want to figure out is what would this correspond to? So this would be what's the right side of our OR, G dot H, arrow, what's our goal? F wedge G. Now if I had these three parts, this or this, this thing leads to F or G, this thing leads to F or G, so I'd be able to say here, F wedge G. In fact, I could say that line four, wedge out, en du trois. I could totally say that. Now, do I have this? Yeah. Do I have either one of these? No. But what are they? Arrows. How do I prove arrows? Arrow in. So if I can prove these two, then I can get this with a wedge out. Let's give it a try. Let's see if I can build this arrow. So line two, I'm going to say F as a provisional assumption, and I'm going to go after F wedge G. So I'm going to provisionally assume this, and I'm going to try and get this. Can I do it? All right, so I've got F now. Could I get F wedge G? Very easily. Look, I could just add the G on to the F. Wedge in, line two. And this arrow is now done. Look, I zoom out. If I got F, I can totally get to F wedge G. Arrow in, two through three. And look, that arrow's done. I did it very quickly. Let's do the other one. Zoom in a level, line five. Let's start with G dot H. And what we're going to do is we're going to go after also F wedge G. That's the goal. We're going to try and get that thing. All right, so now with G dot H in play, look, I got a dot there that I can break apart. And out on line five for both. I'm actually not even going to need the H. Remember, I'm going after F wedge G. Can I get it? I have half of one of the things that I need. What am I going to do? I'm just going to add an F onto G. Where did the F come from? With the way wedge in works, as long as you got one of the pieces, you can staple the other thing on. So look, line eight, F wedge G. Wedge in, line six this time, because I'm adding the F onto the G. Look, I did it. I got F wedge G. So I can zoom out and I can say, line nine, if you got G dot H, you can totally get to F wedge G. Arrow in, five through eight. And here's where things get really maddening. Look, now I got this other thing that I needed. So here's the deal. Look at this pattern. If you got an or statement, which I do right here in line one, this or this, F wedge G and H. And you have one of the or pieces on the left side of the arrow. So look, the or piece here is F. Do I have an F somewhere on the left side of the arrow? Right there. And you have the other or piece on the left side of an arrow. So the other or piece in line one was G dot H. Do I have that on the left side of the arrow somewhere? Right there. And then what you can do is you can get the right sides of those arrows. If, if they're different, you can put them together as a wedge. But look, they're the same. So what does that mean? Line 10, I can just say F wedge G. How? Wedge out. Where was the or? Line one. Where was the left side or part on the left side of the arrow? Line four. Where was the right or part on the left side of an arrow? Line nine. This problem is done. So we had to think backwards to complete the dilemma, but we were able to figure out the problem this way. So this one's a bit convoluted. We have to think a little bit backwards. It works this way. That was starting our foray into doing some proofs with disjunctions. What I'm going to do in the next video is work on some additional problems dealing with proofs with disjunctions. See you next time.